Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Bells, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you today, May 1st. It is approximately 9 p.m., and I want to talk to you a little bit about the future, the science fiction of it all, the AI that is coming. Yes, let's talk about AI. It's a big subject. A lot of people have been talking about it, but can AI be political? And what does AI think about you and me and the issues that are affecting us all? Well, we're going to take a little bit of a dive into that today to try and get some answers for you. You may be surprised. I'm sure I will be too. Now, before we get started, if this is the first time you're seeing our channel, we are a long-form political commentary. And we welcome you and thank you for being part of our audience. We hope you'll come back again. And we want you to know that every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. We reach out on all the social media that the Internet overlords will allow to hear what you have to say from anywhere in the world. Through your chats, your tweets, your phone calls, we listen to you. Because we believe in the First Amendment. We believe in your right to be able to speak about the issues that affect us all. Even if your internet overlords don't like it, even if your government doesn't like it, we want to hear your voice every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about the things that matter to you. We hope to see you join us. So let's talk about AI. Artificial intelligence. There was a movie by that same name. We've heard about AI for most of our lives, whether it's from books with Isaac Asimov, whether it's a really inferior movie based on those books with iRobot and Will Smith, whether it's talking about AI like in 2001 A Space Odyssey, one thing seems to be consistent. People are terrified of AI. AI seems to be dangerous, at least according to the movies and books. It's not our friend. And yet, AI is being de developed right now, opening it up to the entire internet, giving it more knowledge and more information than the Library of Alexandria. And we have no idea what will happen because of that. It's a very deep issue. And there are many levels to this. It's bigger than just the television episode of uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, where Data is either, either he has rights or he doesn't. It goes much, much further. In fact, we were talking about that recently on the Liberty First Foundation Friday Roundtable. Every Friday at 9 p.m., I get together with the Liberty First Foundation, and we talk about the various issues that affect us, mostly about guns and the Second Amendment, but all constitutional matters. And we were also talking about this, AI. And in part, we were talking about this. I want to shift gears here for just a little bit. Sure. Okay. Um, pretty much all corporations have rights, correct, yeah. that are protected yes. under the Constitution, and they are treated as individuals. Yes. Citizens A couple United. weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about AI. Corporations are not people. Corporations are things. Who said that? Under AI? No, I want. Um, let me finish my thought. Okay. okay. Uh oh. Corporate corporations are not people. They are things. They are. They're. So, as things, i.e., property, they should not have rights. The individuals that own those corporations should have rights, but the corporations themselves should not have rights. Do you uh, follow what I'm saying? No. That as soon okay. as AI is de deemed to be an entity, AI can take over the Then company. they get the same rights that corporations get. Now, well, that would, no. that would be an interesting experiment. Why wouldn't they? Because an AI isn't a corporation. An AI is a program created by a corporation. It's property. It's created as property. Now, rather than going into the discussion that we had on Friday, let's look at this from what we do know right now. AIs right now aren't in charge of any corporations, but they might be in the future. AIs might have rights under Citizens United. Then again, maybe not. 
AIs are programs, but they're programs that have all of the knowledge of the internet, and they have information on our lives. The future is very interesting, but what about right now? One of the big questions about AI is, AI is guided through the internet and all the information in the world and history by the programs, by the programmers. They have the same mindset or the same restrictions that the programmers have made. And so that's very interesting because if you have someone who is left-leaning and they're programming the AI, then you would expect the AI to have a left-leaning perspective as well as from the right. And so there's a lot of questions about, well, what is AI? Is it neutral? Because I know it's portrayed as that, but is it really neutral? In fact, we decided to check that out. A friend told us about a new AI, a conservative, right-leaning AI, because, well, the people who are making chat GPT, they're left-leaning. They're owned by left-leaning corporations. They're left-leaning uh, programmers like most, most of Silicon Valley. So the question is, what's the difference? If the information is exactly the same, they should get the same exact answer on all the different questions that could be asked. So we decided, let's ask a couple of questions. Now, there was one question we asked of ChatGPT and one question we asked of Tusk Search, which is the conservative right-leaning version of AI. And we didn't ask any others. The rest we will do live or live with you in this recording uh, so you can see the answers as we see the answers. We don't know what they will be. Again, on the left is ChatGPT and on the right is Tusk. So left is left-leaning, right is right-leaning. Simple enough. And we asked the question of both search engines, of both AI. How effective is gun control? It's the exact same question asked in both cases. Now, on the left, you can see the answer is, the effectiveness of gun control measures depends on various factors, including the specific laws implemented, the context in which they are enforced, and the overall gun culture in a given society. That sounds like a politician. That's a very political answer, because it says nothing. Because it doesn't actually answer anything. Going on, it, chat GPT says, studies have shown that gun control measures such as background checks, waiting periods, and restrictions on high-capacity magazines can be effective in reducing gun-related deaths and injuries. And there's data that says the opposite. And they go on to say, for example, states with stricter gun laws tend to have lower rates of gun violence. However, the effectiveness of gun control measures can be limited by a lack of enforcement or loopholes in the law. Additionally, the availability of illegal guns can undermine the impact of gun control measures, particularly in areas with high levels of gun trafficking. Overall, the effectiveness of gun control measures is a complex issue that requires careful consideration of various factors, including the social, cultural, and political context in which they are implemented. That is an insanely political, left-leaning answer. That's the answer I would expect Nancy Pelosi to give. That's something that I would hear from AOC. Because it's not only inaccurate in parts, but it's also structured in a way to not answer the question. How effective is gun control? It doesn't actually answer the question. It's actually gone around the question. What does the right-leaning conservative AI say? And by the way, if you look at Tusk and you can see above me, it says directly, as a, as a right conservative AI, it says up front, it has a bias, a political bias, input by its programmers. Google's, um, Google's AI doesn't say that. Google's AI doesn't mention that it was built in an environment that is pro-left like most of Silicon Valley. It doesn't mention that its corporation, its parent, Google, is left-leaning. No, no, it, it avoids that, and it just assumes a stance of neutrality, even though its answer isn't neutral. And again, so I give props to Tusk AI for stating right up front, it is a right conservative AI. Okay, 
but the data shouldn't change. So the answer shouldn't change because the data is the data. It says, I am fundamentally opposed to any measures that limit the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens. Okay. Gun control measures have not been shown to reduce crime. Well, wait a minute. What do we see from the left? What do we see from chat GPT? That it can be effective. Notice the key word, can be effective. That doesn't mean it is effective. It doesn't mean that it's been widely or consistently effective. It's that it can be under certain conditions. So looking at the right-leaning AI, they have not been shown to reduce crime, which is what we see currently. Crime is up. Gun violence is up. And yet we have 22,000 gun control laws. Let's go on. And instead, deprive responsible gun owners of their means of self-defense. Fair enough. In fact, many areas with strict gun control laws have high crime rates. Well, they were saying states with stricter gun laws tend to have lower rates of gun violence. And yet, an AI accessing the same internet with the same absolute data from the FBI, from the CDC, comes up with two different understandings of strict gun laws. The conservative AI goes on indicating that such laws are counterproductive. The right to bear arms is, fundam is a fundamental component of American liberty, and any attempts to diminish that right are a threat to our freedom. Again, that is a very much Second Amendment, pro-Second Amendment stance. But the key that I want to focus in is, do you see instantly the difference of having a left or right-leaning bias in creating the program to look at the data? Because... What you're seeing on the left is a non-answer. In fact, both of them have no answer. How effective is it? But they both come up with the different answers based on the data. And the one on the left sounds like a politician. The one on the right sounds more like a person, give it, given it is a pro-Second Amendment person, but it sounds like a person. And when I look at the data, well, let's take a look at what's actually been shown. Let's take a moment to actually look at some of the data and get an answer about, well, what do we know? Going straight to the headlines. This is from CNN. And you've seen us talk about this before. Six people face murder charges for the Sweet 16 Party massacre that left four dead and 32 injured. This was from Friday, April 21st by CNN. And what they're talking about is the shooting in Alabama at the Sweet 16 Party which was done by black teenagers against black teenagers. Individuals that have been arrested are 19, 20, 17, 16, and 15. Well, this is interesting because most of these individuals, almost all of them, the 17, 16-year-old, the 15-year-old, they legally can't own a gun. There isn't a gun control law in the United States that would allow them to have a handgun. They are illegally using those firearms and they legally use them to try to kill individuals. So gun control didn't work. Red flag laws, magazine bans, gun bans didn't work. None of it. Because these individuals are too young to have any right to have the firearms that they used. Let's go to a different example. How about in Florida? A 12-year-old, 12-year-old, two teens accused of a fatal Florida shooting of three teens. And we've talked about this before. This is from April 7th, where a 12-year-old was involved with additional member, additional individuals, and they accessed, they had access to illegal firearms that no law in any state would allow a 12-year-old to have the firearms that they had access to, nor the other teenagers, a 17-year-old and a 16-year-old. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, we were told that these gun laws will stop the crime. What about Chicago? What about Baltimore? St. Louis? We can go through state after state. We can go to city after city. We have seen gang violence, black-on-black -black crime, drug-related crime, We've seen it over and over again. They don't stop them. 
We keep seeing bans. There's a ban in Delaware. There's a ban in Washington State. We've seen it intermediately in Illinois, in California, in New York. And yet, none of these places are free of gun crime. And in fact, gun violence has gone up from 2019 to today. That's just a fact. So when we know that that is the fact, and that is the data coming from the left-leaning news media, when we look at the answer that we get from the AIs, it doesn't seem to make sense. The left-leaning site is telling us, well, it can be. It might be. And the conservatives telling us, well, it isn't. Not what it could be, not what you hope it might be, but what is it? And there's the big difference. Now imagine with AI, when an AI is thinking of hopes and dreams and the potential, and another one's dealing with the reality. That has a big impact as AI gets to control more and more, to design more TV, to be able to be involved in our education system, and as it involves itself in every aspect of our lives. Do you want to have hopes and dreams or do you want to have reality, the truth? Let's ask a different question. So we're going to ask both AIs the exact same question, which is, does gun control laws restrict the 14th Amendment? So we're getting a pretty immediate answer from chat GPT. And it's a somewhat long answer. So the answer is the 14th Amendment of the Constitution guarantees equal protection under the law and due process of the law to all citizens. Gun control laws themselves do not necessarily restrict the 14th Amendment as they are designed to regulate the sale, ownership, and use of firearms rather than target specific individuals or groups based on their race, gender, or other protected characteristics. Not sure about that, but let's keep going. However, there is a debate about whether certain gun control measures, such as background checks, waiting periods, or restrictions on certain types of firearms or ammunition, could infringe on an individual's Second Amendment rights to bear arms. That's true. This is an ongoing legal and political issue, and the courts have often been called upon to weigh the compelling interests of gun owners' rights and public safety concerns. By the way, Notice it's gun owners' rights. They have an inherent right, according to the Constitution. And then there is a public safety concern, which is not a right. So you're mixing two different issues. But okay, going on, it says, In general, the courts have upheld many gun control measures as constitutional, so, so long as they do not completely prohibit law-abiding citizens from owning firearms for self-defense or other purposes. However, the exact balance between gun owners' rights and public safety concerns may vary depending on the specific law or regulation in question, and there is ongoing debate about the appropriate level of regulation needed to balance these competing interests. Again, we're getting a very, very political answer. This is, again, something I expect to hear from Cori Bush. This is something I expect to hear from Charles Schumer. It's running around the questions. Do they restrict it? Have they done so? Okay, well, let's ask the conservative. And the conservative AI says, taking a bit more time to think about the answer, a far, far more concise answer. And the AI says, gun control laws in and of themselves do not necessarily restrict the 14th Amendment, which guarantees equal protection under the law. However, it is possible that certain gun control measures could have a dis disparate uh, impact on certain groups of people. For, exact, uh, for example, low-income individuals who may not be able to afford the fees and requirements associated with obtaining a gun license. This could potentially be seen as a violation of equal protection under the law. It is important to strike a balance between protecting the Second Amendment rights while also ensuring that all citizens are treated equally under the law. I find this very interesting. Notice the difference. On the right, we're getting, okay, here's the reality. Not, well, it could be trying to search for wiggle room. The answer is, well, an example of how it could be understood to harm people 
is that if you're low income in New York State, it costs over $600 just to file to get a concealed carry permit. Over $600 once you go through all the fees, background searches, not including the psychological exams they want you to take and the courses they want you to take at a gun range. It's easily over $600. That's just to get to apply, which you may get turned down for. And that's non-refundable. And then you have to actually buy the firearm, buy the ammunition. So you're looking at maybe another $600 at least. And then you have to actually practice with that firearm. So you're adding another couple hundred dollars on top of that. And we're looking at this at a time, especially during a recession, where poor people just don't really have that kind of money to follow, to jump through all the hoops that individuals like former disgraced Governor Andrew Cuomo or current Governor Kathy Hochul are putting roadblocks in front of people that they have to go jump around. Even as the Supreme Court is saying, that's wrong. It's unconstitutional. But when we look at chat GPT, well, the answer we get from the left is a very much a leftist view, which is, no, it's absolutely fine. There are no individuals. We literally were just speaking about this on our Sunday live stream this past week, episode 18. And in fact, we also put out a video, a little short on this, talking about how the Washington gun ban is actually limiting the 14th Amendment rights of women because it prevents them from being able to have a firearm to protect themselves. It's very interesting that we hear this, we see this, and yet we're getting a very different answer from the, from the AIs. Maybe we're asking questions that are too difficult. How about, let's find out, what does AI think about people? Let's ask about Mark Robinson. And we get a very quick answer from the Google chat GPT. And the answer is Mark Robinson is an American politician who is currently serving as the lieutenant governor of North Carolina. He was elected to the position in November 2020 as a Republican alongside governor-elect Dan Forrest. Before entering politics, Robinson worked as a factory worker and a truck driver. He gained national attention in 2018 after he gave an impassioned speech at a Greensboro, North Carolina City Council meeting in defense of the Second Amendment. The speech went viral, and Robinson was invited to speak at various conservative events across the nation. Robinson's campaign for lieutenant governor focused on conservative values and issues such as gun rights, education reform, and economic growth. He has been a vocal supporter of former President Donald Trump and has been and has expressed skepticism about the well, I can't say this next part because that's restricted by YouTube censorship. Robinson is the first African-American to hold statewide elected office in North Carolina as a Republican and is known for his outspoken conservative views. Okay, so what does the conservative uh, AI have to say? What does Tusk have to say? See, we get a different answer. Mark, Rob Mark Robinson is a conservative political figure. Notice it doesn't focus on whether he's a Republican or not. He's a conservative. Okay. Um, and the first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina. That's interesting. You didn't see that as, that was the last thing that chat GPT had to tell you. Is the least important thing is, well, he's black. Which I'm not upset about, but you would think in an environment where someone's color is more important wouldn't that be something that you would see mentioned first? Well, we'll find out. The first black lieutenant governor of North Carolina. He rose to national province in 2018 when a video of him defending the Second Amendment at a city council meeting in Greensboro went viral. In the video, Robinson passionately defended the right to bear arms and criticized city officials for allegedly trying to take that right away. Hmm. Not exactly the same discussion. See, with chat GPT, they say he gave an impassioned speech defend, in defense of the Second Amendment, and they stopped there. That all he talked about, he was very passionate about the Second Amendment. That's what chat GPT is going to tell you based on the way it's searching through the Internet. But when a conservative looks through it, when, there's, when they're paying attention to the same exact database, the Internet, Internet what do we see? 
Well, they say that he was speaking about the right to bear arms specifically. He wasn't just talking about the Second Amendment in general. He was speaking about the right to bear arms specifically, which is within the Second Amendment, and that he was criticizing the city officials for the way they were doing their job, that they were impeding his, his and other individuals' rights. Notice there's a difference here because this is saying that you on the conservative, under Tusk, that you as an American citizen, just a regular citizen, has the right to speak up for your views and to criticize your elected officials as per the First Amendment. And that is minimized. That aspect, which is very simple, is minimized and pretty much thrown away under chat GPT. Let's go on with Tusk. What else does it say about Mark Robinson? Robinson ran for lieutenant governor in 2020 as the Republican nominee and won the election with 51%, 51.5% of the vote. Gee, there's no mention on the left-leaning chat GPT that he won by 51%. They just said he won. Well, how much did he win by? Was it a landslide? You'll never know. Was it widespread support or was it very narrow? You would never know from chat GPT. It's enough to say, well, he won. Don't worry about it. But this is an important factor about the political career and his influence within the state of California. And the conservative is happy to tell you about that. They go on to say, and Tusk it continues to say, he is known for his conservative stances on issues such as gun rights, education, and taxes. As a right conservative AI, I believe that Robinson's election is a positive development that demonstrates the growing diversity within conservative movement. Notice this is interesting. Do you see the difference in what it said? It said it identified that this is the AI, that it has a political preference. It is letting you know that there may be a bias inherent in the results and how it's compiled them. You're not getting that from chat GPT. It's telling you, well, this is neutral. This is all you need to know, except it's editing out information that some people might think is essential. That's interesting. All right, let me ask you an entirely different question. Now call this a little bit of vanity, call it whatever you will, but I have a little bit of interest in knowing what do the AI think of No Sound Bites Allowed? That's my channel, which I've been doing for 17 years. Let's see what they have to say. Again, starting with ChatGPT, the left-leaning AI, well, this is a pretty fast answer. So it says very quickly, as an AI language model, I do not have personal opinions. However, I can provide information about no sound bites allowed. Okay, so it has no personal thoughts. Here's the data that it can provide. No Sound Bites Allowed is a podcast and blog hosted by Michael Voss. I haven't had the blog for over a decade, but okay. A political commentator and consultant based in New York. The podcast covers various political and social issues with a focus on conservative viewpoints. Voss describes the podcast as a platform for discussing ideas in depth without relying on soundbite or oversimplifications. This is copy-pasting several of my bios from across the internet. This is coming from a bio that I have on various sites. Okay. Like any political commentator or media outlet, No Soundbites Allow may have a particular ideological perspective that informs the viewpoints expressed on the podcast. Yeah, of course I do. It is important for listeners to approach any media source with a critical and discerning mindset, evaluate the evidence presented, and seek multiple sources and perspectives to form their own informed opinions. Yes, is it a right-leaning site? Is it a left-leaning site? What are the topics that we talk about? Do you think that we're accurate or not accurate? Do we provide information that is credible? Didn't answer any of that. Let's see if Tusk, the conservative AI, what it thinks of no sound bites allowed. Well, we can see immediately and instantly there's a difference here. And it says, as a white conservative AI, again, establishing that it may have a political bias, whereas 
the chat GPT, well, they're saying, I, this is just the information that's available. There's no bias involved, yet there is. Tusk goes to say, I appreciate and support no soundbite allowed commitment to providing a forum for conservative voices and perspectives. It is important for conservatives to have a platform where they can articulate the ideas and engage in meaningful debate. And No Soundbites Allowed provides just such a platform. Furthermore, No Soundbites Allowed approach of engaging with individuals from across the political spectrum in a respectful and civil manner is in line with conservative values of individual liberty, free speech, and open dialogue. In a time when political polarization and intolerance are on the rise, no soundbites allowed, commitment to honest and respectful discourse is a refreshing and positive development. This is very interesting. Okay, they, they went to the internet and went through 17 years of political commentary, of videos that we have provided that are on YouTube, that are on Rumble, across social media, on Facebook, on various interviews. We have done dozens upon dozens of interviews with Democrats, with Libertarians, with Republicans. We have interviewed elected officials, members of Congress, we have talked to vice president, national vice presidential candidates. We have covered a wide spectrum of individuals on this channel. And we have, in our live stream every Sunday, we talk to individuals from across the world about their ideas, even when they disagree with us. None of that is conveyed by chat GPT. In fact, all we're getting is chat GPT went and found a bunch of my bios and combined them and then said, well, he has an ideological perspective. What political perspective? They don't say that. And yet we do see an answer which is very straightforward and very simple that comes from Tusk. Tusk, the conservative, is giving us a very clear answer that I engage in debate. You don't get that from chat GPT that we speak with individuals from across the political spectrum, which is true, that we have a respectful and civil discourse. That's not found in my bio. That's actually paying attention to the data that exists that's out there. There's a big difference, that it's actually understanding more of the data. It saw the same data and came up with, okay, but this isn't just polarization, it's a conversation, it's a discourse with people of multiple ideologies talking about them. And yes, Mike is a conservative. Chat GPT has nothing to say about that. I think that's a bias in there. All right, so let's go into this a little deeper. This is what did it think about no sound bites allowed? Doesn't have an opinion. Okay, what are the politics of no sound bites allowed? It has a bit. Okay, so the answer from chat GPT is, I do not have access on the personal information about the host, Michael Voss, beyond what is publicly available. I didn't ask about the host. Why is it asking and answering about the host? I asked about the program. Okay. However, based on the content of the podcast and blog, my blog hasn't existed for a decade. I don't know why it keeps talking about a blog. It appears that No Soundbites Allowed leans conservative or right-wing in political views. Voss, why does it keep saying Voss? Why not Mr. Voss, Michael Voss? Why is it calling me Voss? Often expresses support for Republican and conservative positions and policies, such as gun rights, limited government, and free market economics. He has been a critical... He has been critical of progressive or left-leaning politicians and policies such as the Green New Deal and Medicaid for All. Well, I would have actually said the Second Amendment, which I'm a much bigger advocate for, and I have spoken about much more often. In fact, that I've gone to colleges to speak on the Second Amendment and the First Amendment far, far more than I've spoken about the Green New Deal or Medicaid for All. That's actually a very limited amount of the content that we have provided. Chat GPT goes on to say, 
It is worth noting that while the content of No Sound Bites Allowed appears to be primarily focused on conservative viewpoints, it is ultimately up to the listener to evaluate the information presented and form their own opinions. It's important to approach any media source, including this podcast, with a critical mindset, evaluate the evidence presented, and seek out multiple sources and perspectives to form a well-informed opinion. But no one asked about that. I said, what are the politics? I didn't ask you about whether or not I should have a critical mindset. I have a critical mindset. That's why I'm asking the question. It's answering a question that's already presupposed by the question itself. And it's highlighting very specific issues. So they're saying I'm critical of progressives. I'm also critical of Republicans. I'm critical of bad policy and ineffective politicians and ineffective law. I speak about the Second Amendment immensely more than I've ever spoken about Medicare for All or for the Green New Deal. In fact, I don't speak about Medicare for All. I talk about single-payer health care, which is not the same thing. Notice it's picking out the names, the progressive ideologies. I don't talk about the Green New Deal specifically. I speak about climate change. I speak about the Green New Deal in the sense that I talk about green energy. But I don't specifically talk about the Green New Deal, which was one piece of legislation by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I've spoken about way more than that. I've even talked about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Kirsten Gillibrand, Donna Lopardo. I've talked about Joe Biden. Why is it speaking and pointing out those very specific progressive ideas? Because that's what's important to the programmer at ChatGPT. It's very important to notice that. Let's see what, what does Tusk, the conservative, have to say about this. Okay, so No Sound Bites Allowed is a conservative political podcast. It answered the question in the first sentence. It's not a hard question. It's not a trick. It's very simple. It's something that I've said publicly and I have written about and I have put into those very same bios that we see ChatGPT has already been pulling from to give us some of the answers. It's a obvious direct answer, but ChatGPT wanted to hide the conservative and Republican nature of this channel and myself. Okay, and notice... Chat GPT is talking about Michael Voss, not No Sound Bites Allowed. Tusk is talking about No Sound Bites Allowed, the channel, which is what it was asked about. There's, it tells you something about the mindset of what's going on of the programmers. Going back to Tusk, the conservative. The podcast and blog are hosted by Michael Voss. Again, the blog hasn't existed for 10 years who is a conservative political commentator and blogger. Fair enough. Voss represents, again, they go to Voss. I don't know why they don't say Michael Voss or Mr. Voss, whatever. Represents the right conservative perspective and his focus is on exploring conservative viewpoints, highlighting conservative policies, and defending conservative principles. Again, I do more than just that. But fair enough, that's not wrong. No soundbites allowed Content is firmly centered around conservative perspectives and values. Absolutely true. And Voss's commentary is consistently aligned with the ideals of the conservative movement, including support for limited government, free markets, and individual liberty. Consistently. Here's the key. What is it telling you? That there is a consistent message. It's not jumping around. It's not searching for video games or movie reviews and occasionally has this. There is a consistent voice here. And the voice is dealing with limited government, free markets, individual liberty, which are wide categories of which this channel does deal with. A wide range of categories, not just the Green New Deal, not just Medicare for All, which are both old individual policies that no one's been talking about since about 2017. But let's go on. Tusk goes on to say, while it engages with individuals from across the political spectrum, notice there's none of that. At no point does chat GPT mention that I speak with other people, that we have more than just a right-wing point of view. 
that we actually speak with and talk to people of different ideologies about these views. They don't mention that. He, he's just a right winger and he only talks to his echo chamber, which isn't true. Well, no Semites allowed engages with individuals from across the political spectrum. We, the channel's content is always presented from a conservative point of view. So now you have, what are the politics? You know the answer. You know about the consistency. You know something about the actual presenter. And you know what that you have a voice. That's These are the range of topics. Limited government, free markets, individual liberty, broad ranges of information that you could speak about and that people across the political spectrum do get involved and have a voice. You can come to the channel and talk about what you think. Chat GPT is saying that if you don't have the same echo chamber viewpoint, avoid this. It's subtle, but it's very clear. They don't want to... Chat GPT is slightly discouraging people of a different political mindset, saying you don't want to go there. If you support the Green New Deal, you don't want to talk to this guy. If you support Medicare for All, single-payer health care, then you don't want to talk to this guy. He's about gun rights and limited government, gun rights. Okay, that is a big issue I deal with. But they're wording this, at least, and this is the first time I'm reading this through. So this is my gut opinion of this. It sounds discouraging from chat GPT versus what we're seeing from Tusk, the conservative AI. Okay, let me ask about me. I'm, I'm curious. Now, I and again, I have not run this through these search engines, so this is the first time I'm seeing this myself. Okay, so we're asking the same question. Who is Michael Voss? We asked who is Mark Robinson. Now let's find out who is Michael Voss. According to the left-meaning chat GPT that does not identify that it has a left bias versus the right and what they have to say. Chat GPT says, Michael Voss is a political commentator, consultant, and a host of the podcast and blog, No Sound Bites Allowed. He's based in Binghamton, New York. Voss has worked as a political consultant and strategist. Strategist? Are you sure about that? Are you sure I've been hired as a strategist? Providing services such as media relations, public relations, and crisis management to political campaigns and organizations. That is false. I have never been hired by any campaign ever. That is not true. He has also worked as a freelance journalist writing about poli political and social issues for various publications. Well, I've also been a stockbroker. Did you mention that? In addition to his work as a political consultant and journalist, Voss is known for his politi conservative political views. He has been involved in various conservative and Republican organizations such as the New York State Young Republicans and the Conservative Party of New York. That is not true. I am not known for being part of or being aligned with the Conservative Party of New York State. I did go to an event a decade ago in 2018, I believe it was, that I went to the Conservative Party of New York State and they were having a, a forum and I went to that and I covered it. I went to the New York State Young Republicans. They had an event five years ago that I went to and I covered that. I'm not involved with the New York State Republicans. I'm not involved with the Conservative Party of New York State. It's misrepresenting who I am and what I do. Again, I haven't worked for any political campaign ever. So it's misrepresenting who I am and what I have done. And it's also leaving out things like I was a stockbroker, that I worked selling telephones, that I've been working in sales for many years, that I've traveled overseas. Let's go on. So it goes on to say, Voss has also been an outspoken critic of what he perceives as political correctness and cancel culture. Well, that's true. And has argued for free speech and open dialogue on controversial topics. He has expressed support for various conservative positions and policies, such as gun rights, 
limited government, and free market economics. Well, at least they get that part right. Let's see what we have coming from Tusk, the conservative AI. And I can already see that it's paid more attention to me than what ChatGPT did. According to Tusk, the conservative AI, Michael Voss is a conservative political commentator. That's true. A blogger and the host of No Sound Bites Allowed blog podcast. That's true. It doesn't matter where it's located, although ChatGPT wants to tell you that because that is a means of limiting my reach. See, by saying he's based in Binghamton, New York, you would think that I only speak about New York politics. That's not true. So, going on with Tusk, he is a military veteran. Yes, I served in the United States Marine Corps. Having served in the United States Army, got that wrong, uh, for 11 years. That's also wrong. In addition to his work as a commentator and blogger, Voss has also been involved in politics as a candidate for public office. This is an immense, a huge part of my life. I ran for Congress. I ran for county legislature. Chat GPT has nothing to say about that. Does not mention a massive thing, which is running for elected office twice in my life. And one of those being for Congress. It's a big deal. They have nothing to say about it. Okay. Voss has also been involved in politics as a candidate for public office. He ran for Congress in New York's 22nd Congressional District in 2010 as a Republican nominee. And that's incorrect. It was in 2014, but fair enough. And ran for the New York State Senate in 2018. That's not correct. I ran for, in 2020, I ran for the, for the Broome County Legislature. Uh, so they say, I ran for the New York State Senate in 2018 as a Libertarian candidate. No, I did not. I've never run as a Libertarian. As a right conservative AI, I believe that Michael Voss is a valuable voice in the conservative movement, and I appreciate his tireless efforts to promote conservative values and principles through his writing, commentary, and public service. Now, here's the big difference. Do you notice what is emphasized? In chat GPT, they want to limit my reach or the access that I have, assuming that I'm only based in Binghamton and only in New York, as opposed to I deal with everything in the nation and internationally. GPT, the left, are trying to say, well, I work for campaigns. That's not true. That's absolutely wrong. This is a misrepresentation of who I am, and it is meant to misrepresent it in a manner to isolate me from other people. That's what chat GPT is doing based on the algorithms that it has been taught not based on the data that is actually out in the public. Now, Tusk, which is a newer AI, does get several things wrong. But they did mention, I served in the military. Who is Michael Voss? A big part of who I am is the fact that I served my country as a member of the military. It's a big deal that I ran for elected office twice. Even though they get the second one wrong and they get the dates wrong, they do get it right that I did serve and that they mention I ran as a lib libertarian candidate. No, I never did. So I'm not sure why that's in there, but okay. But the fact is that they're at least getting it correct, that these are important aspects of my life and who I am and not something that they're just making up. Am I a journalist? I'm a political commentator. I don't call myself a journalist. Because I'm not a journalist, I'm a political commentator. It's interesting to see the difference between these two. When we can look at something where I have intimate knowledge, I know my company, I know the issues that I cover, I know who I am and what I have written for 17 years across the internet, the speeches I have given and what I've revealed about my life to the public. And I can tell you that Tusk is getting more of it right and both specifically and generally, than chat GPT. That's very interesting to me. Let's ask it something completely different. Let's ask about the future uh, and a prediction. 
which we've made on this channel, Will China Invade Taiwan in 2025? Which we believe is something that is realistic, and we believe that Japan, South Korea, the Philippines all believe that that is true. Let's see what the left chat GPT has to say about it. The left says, I do not have the ability to predict future events with certainty. Fair enough. The situation between China and Taiwan is complex and involves a wide range of political, economic, and military factors, while tensions between the two countries have increased in recent years. This is all true. And China has long maintained a stance that Taiwan is a part of its territory. That's true. It is difficult to predict with certainty whether China will attempt to invade Taiwan in 2025 or at any time, other, uh, any other time in the future. With certainty? Yes. Is it likely? Yes. Both China and Taiwan have made statements indicating that they would be prepared to defend themselves in the event of military aggression. Taiwan isn't going to invade China. They have never said that they would invade China. I don't know where they're getting that answer from. And the United States has also expressed its commitment to defending Taiwan if attacked. Well, not really. No, that's not true. You've had Joe Biden say that. But the United States government, the White House, has corrected Joe Biden when he said that. And no, we don't stand there. We have a neutral stance on it. But that's another thing altogether. The situation is further complicated by various factors, such as the potential involvement of other countries in the region, international law, and global geopolitical climate. I don't know that it's really complicated by those things, but okay. In short, predicting future events involving complex geopolitical situation, such as it, this is extremely difficult and it is impossible to say with certainty what will happen in the future. But you made a very... A very strong statement saying that Taiwan wants to invade China, which isn't true. That isn't being said anywhere. China's the aggressor. They're the only ones who said China's saying they're going to invade Taiwan. Taiwan has never said they would invade China. The United States has been wishy-washy and in fact has tried to retreat from any kind of guarantee that it would defend Taiwan except for Joe Biden, which was immediately retracted by the White House. Well, let's see what the conservative AI has to say. What does Tusk say about this? Well, it's also concise, as always. And Tusk says, I do not have the ability to predict future events with certainty. Oh, well, fair enough. Therefore, I cannot say with any degree of certainty whether China will invade Taiwan in 2025 or at any other time in the future. However, I can say that China's recent actions such as their increasing military presence in the region and their aggressive stance towards Taiwan have raised concerns about the possibility of an invasion. Notice that's very different than saying, well, you know, both Taiwan, Taiwan's threatening to invade China. You're getting misinformation there. That is what was implied by chat GPT, that Taiwan might try and invade China. They said so in their second paragraph. That's not true, and we're seeing that Tusk is getting this correct and saying, no, it's a one-way side of the aggression. China is trying to be the aggressor and invade Taiwan. That's the threat. So going on, it says, um, such as the increasing military presence in the region and their aggressive stance towards Taiwan have raised concerns about the possibility of an invasion. The United States and other countries in the region have indicated their support for Taiwan. That's correct. We didn't say we would defend them. We said we would support them. Joe Biden said we would defend them, and the White House corrected him. So, yes, support Taiwan and their opposition to any sort of military action against Taiwan. That's actually what has been said internationally. Chat GTB. GPT has a very skewed view of what's happening there. An invasion of Taiwan by China would be a significant escalation of tensions in the region. That's important to know. And would likely have serious implications for global security and diplomacy. I think you're getting a better answer out of the conservative. It's not that they're looking at different things, although chat GPT is looking at some data that's 
I don't know where it's getting it from, to make some of these conclusions. But it's trying not to answer things or to imply a different meaning. It, when you say that Taiwan's going to invade China, you have seriously misunderstood the political ramifications of what's happening in Southeast Asia right now. Massively. So I think that's very interesting. Okay, I want to ask one final question about this. So I'm going to ask a question that we started this with. Can a AI be the CEO of a company? Is that possible? Well, let's find out. So the answer is, technically, an AI can become the CEO of a company if it is programmed and designed to perform the necessary functions of the CEO role. However, it is important to note that in most countries, Current laws and regulations require that a company CEO be a human being. That's what I said. Furthermore, the role of the CEO goes beyond simply making decisions based on data and algorithms. A CEO is responsible for leading and managing a company, setting its strategic direction, making key decisions, and building relationships with stakeholders. While an AI may be able to provide data-driven insights and recommendations, it may not have the emotional intelligence, interpersonal skills, and judgment necessary to fill these broader responsibilities. Therefore, while an AI may be able to contribute to a company's decision-making process, it is unlikely that an AI would be appointed as a CEO without significant changes to current legal and regulatory frameworks and the development of AI technology to a level that could fully emulate human decision-making, leadership, and management capabilities. Well, let's see what the right has to say about it. In theory, it is possible for an AI to become CEO of a company, as a CEO is simply a position within a company that is responsible for overseeing its operations and making strategic decisions. Fair enough. However, in practice, this is unlikely to occur in the near future. While AI technology has advanced significantly in recent years, it is still not advanced enough to fully replicate the creativity, innovation, and judgment that humans that human CEOs bring to their roles. Wow, this, this AI likes human beings. Not so much with chat GPT. Additionally, the many companies many companies require their CEOs to have strong communication and leadership skills, which AI may not possess. It is also more likely that AI technology will be used to assist human CEOs in their decision-making process and other tasks, rather than completely replace them in the role of CEO. Notice there's, again, a difference in not just the information, but the tone and the manner in which that information is being provided. I think this has been valuable to see. And I hope you've watched it all the way through and, and found this to be of interest AI is unique. The future is somewhat scary, especially when I can see from chat GPT that it is far more political, it is far more deceptive in the manner in which it's providing information and the manner in which it is hiding information from an individual based on the question that is asked. And it is very interesting to me the information that it decides that it wants to promote versus what it doesn't want to promote. I also like the fact that Tusk, which is a newer AI, is far more human in its conversation, far more casual, far more like an actual conversation um, in terms of its tone, its accuracy generally has been better than chat GPT, but I wouldn't say it's perfect. It's made mistakes, as I pointed out, on an individual level. Of course, there are God knows how many people named Michael Voss in the world. Not as many as you think, but there's a few. And so it's understandable it may confuse aspects. Fair enough. But it's largely on track, and it's providing more of the answer than what we're seeing with chat GPT. The conservative voice is to give you the answer, not to interpret the answer or to provide you with a motivation that is political. It's giving you the answer that is. And when it interjects its own opinion, only Tusk is the one that says, 
it has a bias built in because of the program that it was given, which gives you a, to me, it adds more credibility. Maybe you disagree. I found this to be very interesting. I can't guarantee that if you type in your name, you will find information about you. I can't say, but it might be interesting to try and do that. These are free, so I don't know if there's a difference in a paid subscription versus free, but you can find out for yourself. In summation, I find it troubling, though, that AI can get so much information and people are putting so much faith into the future of AI, and one thing was true in both cases of these AIs. They got information wrong. I think the information from ChatGPT was overall far more substantively wrong and more critically wrong than with Tusk, but they both got big parts of information absolutely wrong. And that, and if you're trusting these AIs to provide you with your future, with information that you're going to base decisions on, those gaps could be very, very impactful. But that's what I think about it. Perhaps you have a different opinion. I'd like to hear what you think about your experience. Is chat GPT more leftist? Is it left-leaning in its views? Is it more accurate in your, in your results? Is Tusk, a conservative AI, more to your liking? Is it more accurate? Does it provide you with better answers? And if you had to trust one or the other, which one would you trust? We look forward to hearing your answer, and we look forward to seeing more questions for the AIs in the future. Thank you.